Topic 6.1 in IB Biology focuses on the human digestive system. This system is designed to break down and absorb nutrients that will fuel cells in your body and eliminate waste products. The digestive system is split into two different parts. The first part, called the alimentary canal, consists of organs that food passes through. The second part consists of accessory organs that food does not actually touch or pass through. Even though food does not pass through them, they help tremendously with the many tasks that make the digestive system function properly. These two images depict real and digitally created digestive systems. Let's label the structures and talk about their functions. Starting with the organs of the alimentary canal, when food enters your mouth, you physically break down food molecules with your teeth and send it down your esophagus when you swallow. Your esophagus muscles squeeze in a wave-like rhythm and push the food into your stomach. Once in your stomach, food begins to be chemically broken down into smaller components. It is very acidic, and it is the location where proteins begin to be broken down. After your stomach, the nutrients get pushed through the small intestine. Specific types of food continue to be broken down in the small intestine, but the main function of the small intestine is to absorb nutrients. After the small intestine, remaining contents get pushed to the large intestine where water and dissolved minerals are absorbed. Any remaining waste is collected and exits through the anus. Now I know you're thinking, why is it called the small intestine if it is longer than the large intestine? The name of this comes from the diameter of the tube. The small intestine is much smaller in diameter compared to the large intestine, even though it is much longer. Next, let's discuss the accessory organs. The first would be the salivary glands. When you are chewing your food, these glands release saliva that contain an enzyme called amylase, which begins to break down carbohydrates like starch while you are chewing. Next is the pancreas, which is an extremely important organ. Located just below the stomach, the pancreas produces many different enzymes that are released into the small intestine. These enzymes are critical in breaking down molecules and balancing your body. More on these enzymes later. Next is the liver. The liver plays many different roles, but for now let's just focus on one, which is that the liver creates bile, which is a chemical that helps break down fats. The liver places the bile into the gallbladder, which is another accessory organ, where it is then released into the small intestine when needed. We just discussed where food goes when we swallow it, so now let's discuss how it actually moves. Gravity alone won't move food down our complex digestive system. So we have two different types of muscle in place to make sure that food only moves in one direction. The first type of movement is called peristalsis, which is done by longitudinal muscle. This muscle moves in a wave-like motion that pushes food down the digestive system. Take a look at this video. It shows the wave-like motion in action. This type of movement occurs in the esophagus, stomach, and intestines. Next, we have another type of movement called segmentation. This moves different, non-adjacent portions of the small intestine back and forth with relaxing and contracting circular muscle. The main purpose of this muscle movement is not to move food from one end to the other, but instead to mix food with enzymes so it can be properly broken down. Again, this movement occurs with circular muscle primarily in the small intestine. Let's take a closer look at the pancreas, depicted in yellow on this image. The pancreas secretes enzymes into the small intestine via the pancreatic duct. These enzymes perform many functions that we will look at on the next slide. What is important to note here is that the pancreas releases these enzymes at the beginning of the small intestine right after the food exits the stomach. This, along with the very large surface area of the small intestine, ensures that there is enough time for food to mix with these enzymes 
so it can be properly digested. So, what are all of these enzymes? Let's take a look. Enzymes are molecules that support reactions in the body, making them easier by lowering the amount of energy needed for the reaction to happen. What does this mean for the digestive system? Enzymes support us in helping to break down the large molecules that we eat. These macromolecules in their normal state are too large for our body to absorb. So we need to break them into their smallest components or monomers in order to absorb them. Taking a look at this chart, you will see that many of these enzymes come from the pancreas, which is why that organ is so important. Without these enzymes, our body would not be able to break down and absorb nutrients that we need to survive. Let's look at an example of how enzymes work within the digestive system using starch. Starch is a commonly consumed macromolecule for the human digestive system. When starch hits the small intestine, it needs to be broken down into smaller monomers to be absorbed. And this is done by amylase secreted from the pancreas. Once the starch is broken down into simple sugars, those glucose molecules are absorbed and taken into the bloodstream. If there is a large amount of sugar in the blood, the extra glucose will be stored as glycogen in the liver. From there, it can be broken up and used as an energy source if blood sugar levels get too low. This is just one example of how multiple organs within the digestive system work together. If we zoom in on the small intestine, the structure is very unique. Let's remember that the main function of the small intestine is to absorb nutrients. In order for this to happen at a high rate, the lining of the small intestine needs to have a large surface area for molecules to pass through and enter the bloodstream. The small intestine achieves this goal by having structures called villi. They are these finger-like projections that line the entire inside of the small intestine. Because they are long and thin, they greatly increase the surface area that broken down food molecules pass through, meaning more nutrients can be absorbed at a time. Additionally, on the surface of the villi, there are also structures called microvilli that increase the surface area even more. Because of these structures, our bodies are able to absorb a large amount of nutrients to support the functions of every body system. Absorption of nutrients occurs in the small intestine. In order for these nutrients to be absorbed, they need to be taken in by cells and therefore will be moved across cell membranes. Different nutrients require different transport methods based on their size and structure. Let's cover some important ones that you need to know. First, we have co-transport, which is a type of transport that pairs two molecules together and moves them across the membrane using cellular energy. One of them is actively moved and the other tags along and is passively moved using the energy from the first one. This occurs for molecules like glucose and amino acids. Next, we have facilitated diffusion. This is where channel proteins help hydrophilic molecules move across the hydrophobic part of the cell membrane. This requires no energy, just a gradient that moves molecules from high to low concentrations. Examples of molecules that use facilitated diffusion are monosaccharides like fructose, vitamins, and some minerals. Next is osmosis, which simply describes the diffusion of water from a high concentration to a low concentration. These molecules move across cell membranes in response to solute concentrations, which aids in water being absorbed in the small and large intestine. Next, we have simple diffusion. This is when hydrophobic molecules pass through the cell membrane, again based on a concentration gradient that requires no energy. Finally, the last type of transport is endocytosis. This can move molecules in bulk across the membrane by creating a vesicle that moves contents into the cell. To model how the small intestine absorbs materials, scientists often use dialysis tubing. The main reason for it being such a good model is that the tubing is designed with very tiny pores that only small molecules can pass through. Just like the workings of the small intestine, only molecules of a certain size can get past the cell membrane. This is why our body goes through so much trouble secreting enzymes that break down molecules into small pieces or monomers. If we didn't, the molecules would be too large for the small intestine to take in, much like how these large molecules seen here cannot move across the layer of dialysis tubing. 